Hey guys, I'm Poe with Let's Get Techie. Today we're going to take a look at another video card. I know you guys might be getting tired of video cards. I do promise that there is more content coming non-video card related. Uh, just had to get these uh, video cards taken care of before I could move on to anything else. Uh, so today we'll be taking a look at an RX 480. This is from XFX. This is a reference design RX 480. So we are going to look at performance in 1920 by 1080, 2560 by 1080, and 4K. Now initially, I didn't think this card was capable of 4K. I think you're going to be surprised at the results. Uh, we'll also look at temperatures, and we're going to compare this card to the 1060 Super Clock that we just reviewed. And I will throw in some of the 1080 for the win benchmark so we can get an idea of where this card falls. Let's take a look at the performance. Alright guys, I'm going to go over the data that you just saw in a little bit more detail. Um, so I noticed during the synthetic benchmarks that the 1060 flat out beat the RX 480 in every single one of them. Now keep in mind, this is also the 1063 gig. It does have that shaved down core. We're talking less CUDA cores. Uh, I would say somewhere in the neighborhood of 5-10% to 10 performance drop from the three gig card. Um, so in these synthetic benchmarks, you're seeing the lesser of the two 1060s beating the RX 488 gig. Uh, now the RX 480 is a little bit different in that if you go from eight gig down to the four gig model, you're not losing any of the core. You still have the same amount of stream processors. Um, but I think it says something that you're talking about the lesser of the two 1060s and it does beat out this full-fledged RX 480 in all of the synthetic benchmarks, basically. Um, now, once we take a look at the actual gameplay benchmarks, this is where it gets a little interesting and where my graphs may 
may be a tiny bit confusing. Uh, so I'm going to explain. I feel like the RX 480 did outperform the 1060 in actual gameplay in most scenarios. Um, we see that in quite a few of the charts, the RX 480 is behind the 1060. But again, that goes back to uh, my little disclaimer up in the top right hand side. The 1060 on several games had to be ran at lower settings uh, just so that the benchmark would actually run. So in these graphs where you're seeing that 1060 outperform the RX 480, again, that's artificial. If we, if we were able to bring up the graphic standards uh, on the 1060 to match what the RX 480 was set at, uh, I believe you would see that the RX 480 would, would in fact beat it. Um, so I would say at 1080p and 2560 by 1080, uh, the RX 480 is probably the better buy. Um, it does include asynchronous compute at a hardware level, something that NVIDIA has not implemented yet. All in all, I think it is a pretty close comparison. Um, I've got a feeling that in gameplay you probably would see the 1060 win out if you had the 6 gig version with the full core. Um, really, I don't see it. I don't see you going wrong with either card. Uh, it's going to come down to whether or not the temperatures are okay for you on the AMD card because uh, it does get a little hot like what we saw. Um, I will say that as long as you keep the fan ramped up, you're not going to have any issues with throttling. But when you look at the temperature graphs, um, we did see throttling when you brought it down to uh, a quiet fan curve. Um, so I did actually see some throttling. But even though it was throttling, it's not throttling in the traditional sense. We're not talking about throttling underneath the initial base clock of the card. We're talking about it cutting back uh, from that factory overclock. Uh, it's factory overclocked at 1288. Uh, I did see it drop back from that. Um, and that was in the graphs where you saw the temperatures rise up to 89. Um, that's the thermal threshold that it was set with uh, in my particular scenario. Um, so you did see the clock come down, but it did not come down below the RX 480 base clock. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at some 4K benchmarks. Um, this is just going to be strictly the RX 480 because the 3 gig 1060 is, there is no universe where that should be even thought about being used for 4K gaming. Uh, so let's take a look at the graphs. guys so I have to say that personally I was impressed at the frame rates that I was able to hit uh, running 4k games on the RX 480 um, I would classify this as a card that you could dabble in 4k with um, this is by no means a card that you're gonna go out and purpose buy for 4k gaming um, it also really wouldn't be a good card to game at 4k with first-person shooters um, a lot of times you're looking at wanting at least 60 FPS to match the refresh rate. Um, in some situations, uh, people who take it seriously, they're using a high refresh rate monitor uh, and then they're looking for 120 plus frames per second, which obviously you're not going to get uh, out of this card at 4K. Um, I think it would be okay for something like Grand Theft Auto. Um, that's not something that's super dependent on you uh, having a high refresh rate or seeing things absolutely the second that they happen in the game. Um, the other thing that I want to discuss is Doom. Um, you'll just have to take my word for it because I don't have a way to measure frames per second when running the Vulcan API. Uh, but if you saw in the graph for Doom, 
that I had a note at the bottom one where it said Vulcan out to the left and basically just says that I noted those frames uh, visually. So it's something that I was just watching the frame rate counter as I was playing. So again, I don't have any hard data for it, but I can tell you the numbers that I put down on the graph are what I saw in gameplay. So it's it's interesting to see how much of a performance how much of a performance gain uh, the Vulcan API can give you with the RX 480. Um, so lastly, and this is probably the most important part about this card, I want to show you guys fan noise. Um, this is I would classify this as a loud card. Um, it's it's decently loud. It is a reference design, so that is to be expected. Um, but it's 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 pretty loud. Um, going back to the thermal throttling situation, you can get it to a fan speed where it's more than acceptable and it's not taking off like a jet engine um, and you're still not seeing uh, uh, thermal throttling. You can get a nice happy medium, you just have to play around with it and get the fan speeds where they need to be uh, for you not to throttle while still being under that audible threshold. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at some fan speeds and uh, listen to what they sound like. All right, guys, so as you heard, uh, it is a decently loud card. Um, to be honest, it's probably the loudest card that I've ever heard personally. Um, but I'll follow that up by saying that it doesn't have to be the loudest card. Um, you are more than capable of running this fan at much lower than the, uh, the max of 5200 RPM. Uh, you can run it well below that and still... Uh, not only not throttle back from the factory overclock, but you can actually hit, um, I was able to get a nice uh, user overclock on top of the factory overclock. Uh, I think mine settled out at uh, 1325 megahertz. Um, so I was able to sustain that. It wasn't fluctuating. It was flat dead at 1325. Uh, also was able to achieve, uh, let's see, I believe 8400 on the memory that was the overclock that I got on the memory um, so it, for a reference card and AMD doesn't have the best history of being good for overclocking uh, in the video cards um, I was pleasantly surprised with this just like I was pleasantly surprised that it was able to game in 4k um, I think this is a great card um, my recommendation would be if you are looking to buy an RX 480 I would go for a non-reference design. There's nothing wrong with this reference design. It's actually a really great card. But if you're able to get a non-reference design for the same price that you could get a reference design for, I would definitely go for something with an aftermarket cooler on it. Um, but again, I don't think that the reference card would be a bad buy if you're able to find one at a really good price or find one used. Um, I think you're going to be super happy with what you get out of this card. Um, so that's it for this video. Um, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down in the comment section below. Um, and I look forward to the next one. See you guys.